I'd like to make everyone welcome uh, to the gospel meeting today. We thank you for coming, and it's a better day, and we're glad to see you and trust that God will bless you for being with us this afternoon. I would like to read uh, four portions from the Word of God, just left in four uh, little statements out of these portions from the Bible. The first you'll find is in the book of Genesis and, and chapter number 37. We're reading here about Joseph, and it says in verse 15 of this chapter, it says, And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brother, and tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. Verse 18, it says, And, he, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Over to the book of Daniel near the end of the New Testament, or the Old Testament, the book of Daniel in chapter number five. I just would like to read here what was written in the king's palace, on the wall of the king's palace. Uh, there was words written on, in verse number uh, 27. We read these words. Tegel, thou art weighed in the balances, and thou art found wanting. Thou art weighed in the balances, and thou art found one thing. Over the New Testament, please, in the book of the Revelation, Revelation in chapter number five, we'll read verse four. And they wept much because there was no man found worthy to open the book and to read, their, read the book, neither to look thereon. Then verse number nine, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And finally, in the last, uh, the last verse of uh, Revelation in chapter number 20, a verse that has been quoted before uh, at the drive-in, verse number 15, Revelation 20 and verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. These four, I would just like to leave four statements with you this afternoon from the Word of God. I would like us to think of a man in Genesis chapter number 37, and we read there concerning him that he was found wandering. He was found wandering in the field. A man who was found wandering. Then we read of a king in Daniel chapter 5 who was found wanting. A man who was found wanting. Then we have read in Revelation in chapter number five about our Lord Jesus Christ, a man who was found worthy. We're glad today to be able to proclaim in your ears of one who alone was found worthy, our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in the last verse of Revelation chapter 19, we read these words, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire not found written. I ask you this afternoon at the outset of my remarks, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven? Dear friend, do you know your sins forgiven today? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and as your personal Savior? Genesis in chapter 20, 37, we read here of a man called Joseph. This man was loved by his father and his father sent him on a journey. And he sent them to see how his brothers were getting on. They were away with their flocks. And he sent them. And he left his home. And he went away to see how his brethren were doing. And you know, it says in this verse that we have read tonight, today, that he was found wandering in the field. He was found wandering in the field. I wonder, dear soul, under the sound of our voice this afternoon, have you wandered along life's, I ask you the question, how long have you wandered along life's little journey without the Savior? I wonder, dear friend, are you just still wandering along life's journey with no hope and with no Savior and with nothing for eternity? Here was a man and he was found wandering and these men asked him a question and I would just ask you the same question this afternoon. They asked him a question, and what was the question? What seekest thou? I wonder, dear friend, as you come to this drive-in 
gospel meeting Sunday after Sunday. I ask you that question this afternoon. What are you seeking for? I wonder, dear friend, are you seeking salvation? Are you seeking peace with God? Are you seeking the Lord Jesus Christ? For dear friend, you could find him today at this drive and gospel meeting. The question was asked, what seekest thou? Dear friend, I ask you that question this afternoon. What are you seeking? Dear friend, you may be, may be trying to enjoy the pleasures of this world, seeking satisfaction in something, dear friend, that will never satisfy. Dear friend, I ask you, what are you seeking for today? I trust that there must be someone has come to this meeting this afternoon, and you're seeking for the Savior to know the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Savior. Dear friend, he was wandering, a man found wandering in the field, away from home, found wandering. And you know, his brother saw him coming, and you know what they say. They said, they says, and when they saw him afar off, they conspired against him to slay him. No, this man was in danger, away from home, and here he was in danger. You know, it led me to think of another man that went away from home and looks gospel in chapter number 15. He left his father's house, took a bag of money away into the far country with him. And you know, he went away, dear friend, to enjoy the pleasures of this world. But dear friend, the money soon ran out and his friends left him. And he was left in that country and nobody gave him anything. And he, sent, he was sent into the fields to feed swine and he would have even eaten what the swine was eating, but no man gave on to him. And he said these words, I have sinned. I will go to my father and I will say, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. What did that young man do? He left the far country and he came back to the father's house. You know, this father, this, this father, and Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, it tells us, and when the father saw him a great way off, he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Dear soul, there's one waiting to receive you this afternoon if you would only turn to him and come to him and seek him. A man that was found wandering. We read in Daniel chapter number five of a man that was found wanting. Here was King Belshazzar. He made a great feast this night and he, 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 he mocked the God of eternity and he brought the golden vessels out of the tabernacle and he, they drank wine in those golden vessels. And you know, dear friend, God already has spoken in that family to his father Nebuchadnezzar. And dear friend, Belshazzar knew that. You can read Daniel chapter 5 when you go home. He knew that. But dear friend, he didn't humble his heart. And dear friend, this night of merriment, and this night of pleasure, dear friend, there's, there's, a, there's a finger and it's written on the wall in the king's palace and it's beside the candlestick where Belshazzar would see it. And dear friend, when he saw it, he, he was troubled and he calls for Daniel to come in and interpret the thing that was written on the wall. And he sends for Daniel and Daniel comes. And this is the meaning of what was written. There was... These were the words that was written, many, many, take a new portion. And this is the interpretation thereof. Many, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Take a learned way in the balance and find what in. Perish, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Dear friend, it was a sad night. Belshazzar started a great night of merriment, but it finished a sad night. Why? Dear friend, God's voice came to him that night. And dear friend, God spoke to him that night in a way that God had never spoken to him before. Dear friend, this man should have repented. This man should have been saved. This man should have been reached. But dear friend, he wasn't. He wasn't. And dear friend, here's writing upon the wall. And dear friend, what's it say? He's weighed in the balances and found wanting. He's found wanting. Dear friend, this isn't to see if Belshazzar's good deeds had outweighed his bad deeds. There's no such thing in the Bible, dear friend. For this tells us, dear friend, it was in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldean slain. Dear friend, his kingdom was finished. It was over. I wonder, dear friend, if, if there was writing up on your wall tonight beside your light and it said the, king, the day is over. 
the kingdom's finished. You're waiting the balances. You're fine welding. Dear friend, would you be happy to leave Portobogie for eternity with what you've got? Dear friend, these things are real. These things are for eternity. Here is a man, and he, he trembled at the thought of being in God. Dear soul, I would long this afternoon that some soul in these cars or that will listen to this message later will tremble as they think there's a day coming when they will have to meet the great God of eternity. Dear friend, you can meet him this day as your savior. Dear friend, don't leave it to a day in the future, dear friend, when it could be too late. Dear friend, leave time for eternity without Christ. Here is a man, and he was found wanting. Dear friend, I ask you tonight, this afternoon, this beautiful January day, dear friend, would you be found wanting, or would you be found in Christ? Dear friend, there's only two ways you'll leave this world saved or lost. I ask you, dear friend, has there been a moment in life's experience when you have trusted the Lord Jesus as your own and personal savior? A man found wandering in the field, a man found wanting, going out into eternity with no hope and with no savior. But we've read, dear friend, in Revelation in chapter number five, a scene in heaven, and dear friend, they're looking for one to open the book. And he says, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book. And then it says in verse number nine, it says, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Dear friend, I would like to speak this afternoon of a man who is found worthy. Dear friend, here was one that was found worthy to open the book in heaven. Why? Why was this one found worthy? Because of who he was. He was the son of God. Dear friend, we're glad to be able to present to you today in the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ. This one was found worthy because of who he was. He was God's beloved son from heaven. And dear friend, that blessed man, that's found worthy in Revelation as a man, dear friend, that came from heaven into this world. And he went to this path down here below. And dear friend, that journey would lead him to Calvary. And that journey would lead him to the cross. And that journey would lead him to be nailed by his hands and feet to that cross between those malefactors. And dear soul, this afternoon, that blessed one was wounded for our transgressions. That blessed one was bruised. For our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Dear soul, this afternoon, this one was found worthy because of who he was, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Pilate wrote the title and put it up on the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And dear friend, the one that the title changed, then it says, what I have written, I have written. Who he was. But dear friend, he's worthy because of what he has done. Dear soul, may this strip your soul today. Do you ever think, why did the Savior go to Calvary? Why was his hands pierced? Why was his feet pierced? Why was he nailed to that cross? Why did a soldier pierce his side? Dear friend, it was because of your sin and my sin. He was the just one, dear soul, dying for us who were unjust that he may bring us to God. Dear friend, this afternoon, he could be your savior today because he has paid the price. And they're singing here, what are they singing? He has redeemed us to God by thy blood. Dear friend, the precious blood of Christ has been shed at Calvary to meet your need and to seal your destiny for eternity. Dear friend, if you trust him as your savior, if you, dear friend, Obey the message of the gospel and depend upon that one that died for you at Calvary and take him as your own and personal savior. The verse has been quoted over and over again at these meetings. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Dear friend, he's worthy because of the price he paid for us when he died on that center cross at Calvary. Dear friend, this afternoon, we trust 
that you may get to Calvary today, get to the place outside the city of Jerusalem and see upon that cross another taking your place and dying in your stead. Dear friend, he has taken the guilty sinner's place. He has paid through that precious blood that was shed at Calvary. Dear friend, he has provided redemption and salvation for you and for me. Dear friend, this afternoon, don't be afraid to trust him. Trust him this afternoon as your savior and rejoice in the knowledge that heaven will be your eternal home. Dear friend, we're glad to be able to present a worthy savior today. He's a song of heaven, dear friend. He's a song, down here he was a song of the drunkard. Dear friend in heaven, he's a song of the redeemed. And dear friend, that song, we're glad. There's those in these cars here today. And dear friend, just to think, one day, these people in these cars will one day fill a place in heaven and they'll sing unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own most precious blood. I ask you, dear friend, the question today. The hymn writer penned the words, Oh, shall I be amongst that throng, all clothed in robes of white, and help to swell that glorious song of rapture and delight? Hymn writer says, I shall, for I have been redeemed with blood of worth and toll, the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God, more precious far than gold. I ask you this afternoon, have you ever appreciated the precious blood that was shed at Calvary for you? Have you ever trusted God's beloved Son and know him as your own and personal Savior? Able to sing as we sometimes sing all over the hall, sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. Dear friend, this blessed man paid in full the price for your salvation when he shed his precious blood. We're glad to present a worthy Savior, a man who was found worthy in heaven, dear friend, because of the work that he accomplished upon earth. Dear friend, that one came from heaven and died in Calvary in order that you may be redeemed and fill a place in heaven at the end of life's little journey. A man found wandering, a man found wanting, but we're glad, dear friend, that there's a man found worthy, our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. But lastly, dear friend, we've read in the book of Revelation again, a well-known verse, a verse that has been quoted before at these meetings, Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 15. And we read there these words, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Dear soul, this afternoon, I would ask you, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Can you look back to a moment in life's experience, a day, maybe you don't know the date, but you can look back to a day when you trusted Christ as your own and personal Savior, and your name was inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. Dear friend, it's sad to think that there's people, and it says, and whosoever was not found written in the Book of Life was cast into the lake of fire. Dear friend, there's only two places in the other side. Heaven for those that are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Hell and the lake of fire for those that die and their sins of right to meet God without a Savior. Dear soul, I ask you this afternoon, is your name written? Can you look back to a moment that your name was written in the book of life? Dear friend, maybe your, name's in, your name was registered when you were born. Maybe there's another register when you were married. Maybe your name's in a, in a church register as a member. But dear friend, <clears throat> those things may be important enough. And I ask you this afternoon, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? It doesn't really matter. One day, Okay. 
For dear friend, it will only be in one of two places. Heaven with all its glory or in hell with all its glory. Dear soul, don't be foolish this afternoon. Don't go on in your sins any longer. Christ has died and provided salvation for you. There's no need for you to perish in your sins and lose your soul for all eternity. God loves you. Christ has died for you. He's shed his blood for you at Calvary. Dear friend, as a guilty sinner, you come this afternoon and trust him as your own and personal Savior. And know your sins forgiven. And know of assurance that heaven will be your eternal home. Dear friend, I trust that your name will be this afternoon written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Be able to lay your head upon the pillow tonight and know that all's well for the ages of eternity. Dear friend, we'll get through this world somehow. But dear friend, we cannot leave this world and just hope for the best. Dear friend, it's heaven or hell for eternity. I trust, dear friend, that you'll trust the worthy man that died at Calvary this afternoon and know your sins forgiven and know heaven as your eternal home. A man found wandering. Dear friend, I wonder you've wandered maybe far too long in your sins. Don't wander any longer, dear friend. Don't want you to finish up like Belshazzar. A man gone out to meet God and he's found wanting. Dear friend, we point you to one who was found worthy, the Lord Jesus Christ. And dear friend, we trust this afternoon that your name may be found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Dear soul, there's salvation for you. And it has been provided at infinite cost. And God, in his mercy, has sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him may be saved. Oh, we save his grace is free. Oh, we save, he died for thee. Dear soul, trust him this afternoon and know of an assurance that your name's is strange. Not in the book in, in this world, but in the book in heaven, your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Because it says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I trust, dear friend, that you'll trust the Savior and be ready for the judgment of God when it should come. Shall we pray? Father, we bow again in thy presence. We thank thee for all that has gathered again this afternoon to hear the gospel. Bless each that has listened to thy word. And we pray, our Father, that they will be blessed. And none will just sadly wander down life's journey, uh, coming and going, and our Father never uh, realizing their need. But this afternoon, they might realize their need of God's salvation. And their Father, come and trust thy Son as their own and personal Savior. Take each to their homes in safety. Bless thy word to each that has heard this afternoon. And pray, our Father, for salvation uh, of precious souls. We ask it in the worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all again for coming, and we trust that God will bless his word.